What's up? It's Jen Brown. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to Basic Ass Kitchen episode number two. So if you're new here and you haven't seen one of these videos before, this is a cooking show where a mediocre home chef, that's me, cooks things most likely for the first time so that maybe you don't have to. A lot of these recipes are going to be from Pinterest. This one today is actually from a real life cookbook as you can kind of see here, but I have found a similar one that I'm going to link below that I think is from Pinterest just so that you can go and find the link for yourself if you want it. So today we're going to be cooking butternut squash gnocchi. gnocchi? I've looked this up multiple times. The Dictionary.com voiceover guy says gnocchi, but I don't know, whatever. I just know it's not nochi, which is how I thought it was said the first dozen times I read it before I actually looked it up. I have tried making, I thought my squash was moldy for a second and this would have been ruined. Okay, no, it's fine. Um, what was I saying? Oh, I have tried to make gnocchi once before. It turned out pretty well, but they were way too big. They were probably at least double the size they were supposed to be, if not more. But I'm going to try it again. I'm going to make them smaller. They turned out pretty well that first time. It was just, it was a lot of potato going on in each bite. So I couldn't eat very many of them before it was too much. So as I held up earlier, I've got my butternut squash already pre-chopped. I just was worried about it going bad while I was trying to decide when I was going to make this video. So I chopped it up a couple of days ago and stuck it in the freezer. It's been defrosting, so that should be fine. So that's going to be your first step is to chop and de-seed your squash. You're going to need a pound of it because rule number one in this kitchen, always cut the recipe in half just in case it sucks. So I don't know how much a pound is of this. I've got a crappy little kitchen scale over there. So I'm going to figure that out in a second and tell you in cups how many you're going to need. But your first job is to chop up your squash and well, I guess DC then chop. It'll take a little bit and it leaves a really strange residue on your hands that is really hard to get off, so fair warning. Okay, so you're gonna need about three cups of squash. Obviously, this wasn't a perfect measurement because these chunks are really big, but I'm pretty sure this is one of those things where it doesn't matter that much. So we're doing three cups of squash. This recipe calls for oat flour. I'm not sure what the linked one will say. This recipe book, if you're interested, take it out of my fancy little stand is true comfort. I haven't made a ton of stuff from it yet, but so far it's been pretty good, but it's like supposed to be healthier comfort food. So I don't really feel like grinding up oat flour right now. So we're going to use regular flour, manchego cheese, which we don't have. And I looked up that like Parmesan can be a substitute for that. So that's what we're going to use. Then just salt and pepper. Why am I reading this to you? I'm going to put it on the side, whatever. Um, salt and pepper, some thyme and egg. Oh, um, this would be super easy to make vegan. If you wanted, you could just change out the cheese and do like a flax egg instead. Yeah, I know that word. I cook some, um, olive oil, minced garlic, lemon juice. 
I don't have fresh sage, but I do have, I think I have sage up there somewhere. Yes, I do. I have rubbed sage. Hopefully that's the same thing. And parsley. Okay. I never do the cover a uh, baking sheet with parchment and set aside. I never do that first. I always just do it when I need to. Okay. Our first step is going to be to bring a pot of water to boil, add the squash and cook until they are tender about 10 or 15 minutes. Okay, so I cooked the squash for about 10 minutes. Because I had it in the freezer and then defrosted it, it was already a little bit softer. So I did it for about 10 minutes. Now I'm gonna drain it and stick it in the food processor just to puree it a little bit. Okay, so now we're going to put the squash back in the pot and cook it for five more minutes on medium. This is supposed to give me about a cup of pumpkin puree. It's pretty soft. I think I got all the chunks, but I figure I'll just smush the rest with a fork if I need to, but we have to cook it for five more minutes, I guess. So I wanna do that. All right, so at this point I started having some technical difficulties and I lost this chunk of footage here between mixing up the ingredients to make a dough and actually rolling it out. So luckily this part was pretty easy. So once you have processed your squash into a butternut squash puree, which I figured out, you cook it again, I think, to kind of remove some of the water because even after I pureed it, it was still a little bit too wet. So I think by cooking it some more, you're kind of getting that water back out. So you need to let it cool. I put it in a bowl in the refrigerator for like half an hour. It just needs to be cool enough that you can handle it without burning yourself. So our next step is to combine the flour and the cheese the salt and pepper and thyme, and then mix all that together. You're supposed to make a well in the center of that, then add the squash and the egg together. Then mix it all up with your hands. Um, then add the extra flour until it, it says until it barely sticks with your hands and looks like dough. I actually think I needed to add a little bit more flour because when I was rolling this out, it started to get really sticky. So for these next clips, I have the video back, but for some reason the sound had this really annoying hum going underneath it that was kind of loud. So I just decided to cut that out and I'll just narrate from here. So you've got your dough, you're gonna roll it out into a bunch of long strings that are like half an inch thick. Once you've got your dough rolled out into these long ropes, you're gonna cut them into three quarter inch pieces. And as you can kind of see here, especially towards the end, it started sticking to my fingers again and I kind of started caring a little bit less just cause I was ready to eat and tired of doing it. So make these pieces smaller, add more flowers so that they won't stick to you. Um, and you're just gonna stick them over on this sheet just to get them out of your way. Then the kind of nice and easy part about making gnocchi is when you're ready to start boiling them, they actually float when they're finished. So you're gonna get your water boiling, put the gnocchi in it, and I would say this is maybe about 10 minutes or so is how long it took for these to boil, but they will float when they're finished cooking. While you're doing that, you're, you're gonna get a pan, cook your olive oil for about five minutes, 
add the garlic, the lemon juice, the sage, and a little bit of salt and let that cook for about five minutes. Then you're just gonna keep it on low while your gnocchi finishes boiling. Then you're going to drain the gnocchi, put that in the saute pan and just kind of stir everything up until it gets nice and heated. Then you can garnish it with the parsley and serve. Basically for this last bit, um, I just got a little bit cause I was like actually eager to eat it cause I was really hungry, but I wanted to just try it for this little bit. Mine turned out much lighter than it's supposed to be in the book. Again, still too big, although not as big as the first time I made it. So I guess that's progress. What I am saying here is the base flavor of this is good. It tastes lighter than when you make it with potatoes. I think I screwed something up with the sauce. There's either like not enough salt in it or just there's not enough happening. Because the first bite I took, it, it was just so bland. It didn't really have any flavor. So I don't think that is the recipe. I think that is me and not getting the level of spices right or not putting enough salt. After I cut this, after I cut the clip off, I added a little bit more salt and a little bit more cheese and spices and that helped a lot. And actually when I ate the leftovers, I put some just red pasta sauce on it and a little bit of leftover fresh mozzarella that we had and that made it a lot better. So I think just playing with the sauces and stuff made this a lot better. So I still consider this recipe a win, even though I definitely need to practice. So that was my adventure into making Naki. I hope that if you tried this along with me, it turns out a little bit better for you. Maybe you can learn from my mistakes, which is kind of the point of these videos in the first place. If you like this video and you want to see more from me, I post on the 1st and the 16th of every month. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.